Hi, I'm Helen Boucher. I work at uh, Tufts Medical Center in Boston, where I practice infectious disease of adults. I take care of uh, a variety of patients, but mostly patients who have uh, compromised immune systems. So most of these are people who've had an organ transplant, like a heart transplant. Uh, and I also run our fellowship training program, so I teach young doctors about infectious disease. Well, that's a good question. So um, as an academic, we are um, sort of fortunate that we get to work in several areas. So we get to work taking care of patients, we get to work in uh, teaching and research, and also in administration. So I get to wear three different hats. Um, and in my research, is probably the main way that I got involved in, in IDSA and in ID Week in particular. So my research is about new antibiotics and how we study them. And that work uh, has led to my involvement with ID Week and IDSA in general. So um, we have been interested in sort of the dearth of antibiotics over the last 10 years and have worked on various task force and uh, committees at IDSA to raise awareness for the problem. So first we had the Bad Bugs, No Drugs campaign. Uh, now we have the 10 by 20 campaign, so a call for 10 new antibiotics uh, that are systemically available by the year 2020. So far we have six of those. So it's very important uh, to your point that we have both uh, new antibiotics, period, and then new antibiotics that are special, new agents and new classes. So uh, my research is in particularly how we study these new antibiotics in patients uh, to ensure that they're safe and effective for FDA approval. So um, immune compromised patients are particularly interesting because they're at even greater risk of infection. And it turns out that in patients with organ transplants, the most common reason they die is from infection, not from the transplant not working. So we do everything we can to prevent infection in the first place, and then when an infection happens, to treat it properly and aggressively. Um, these patients are very interesting to take care of. Uh, things happen very fast, so it's very kind of exciting to take care of them, and um, they get a variety of interesting infections because their immune system doesn't work. So things that you and I might not get sick from, these patients could get sick from and very quickly. That's a very good question. So um, we do everything we can to keep these patients infection-free when they're waiting for a transplant. Um, and in fact, many times, if we can control an infection, we can allow the patient to proceed to transplant. But sometimes now, with the problem of antibiotic resistance, we have patients whose infection is so bad that we can't control it, and then they can't get a transplant. So for example, I've seen patients who have uh, arthritis in their knee and get, it gets infected, and they can't get a joint replacement because you can't put a new joint into an infected area. Uh, similarly, very sadly, we've seen now some patients who get infections caused by resistant bacteria that are so bad that they can't get a heart transplant. And this is something we never want to see. Uh, and this is part of why there's been this national call to action about antibiotic resistance. Well, that's a very good question. So um, we certainly do a lot to manage those infections, and I think there are a couple of aspects to that. So the first is the patient in front of us. We do everything we can for him or her to uh, treat that infection and cure that infection. Sometimes we can't cure it, so we just control it, and sometimes patients have to stay on therapy for long periods of time. We also try to prevent the spread of infection, so it's very important that um, we do everything, like wash our hands carefully. We have good measures in the hospital um, to prevent passing an infection from patient to patient. Uh, and then we use the antibiotics that we have as wisely, as, as well as we can and as wisely as we can, so that they stay effective for as long as possible. Uh, so we're working very hard to raise awareness, and I think that um, the level of awareness has certainly gone up in the past five or 10 years, which is good news, but it still needs to improve. So we still have areas to improve it. Simple things, washing our hands, understanding that antibiotics shouldn't be prescribed for colds. You know, things that we've been talking about a long time, we still have room to improve. And then more sophisticated things, like doing our procedures in the hospital better to make sure that we don't introduce infection. Uh, things like that are all very important. And part of the president's uh, executive action last year was to make sure that these issues and many others, including uh, giving antibiotics to animals and a lot of other areas, are addressed in a timely and, and coordinated fashion. So the president's executive action is sort of mandating a coordinated approach to this. And just two weeks ago, 
uh, the first meeting of the President's Advisory Council on Antibacterial Resistance was convened in Washington to start moving this forward. So we're very excited about that and hopeful that this is going to lead to real results. Sure. So this is a national committee that was convened. Um, it's a, what's called an advisory committee to the president uh, through the Department of Health and Human Services. And our task is to address each of the five uh, goals in the executive order. Uh, the way we're going to do that is to be divided into working groups and then to come back together for public meetings probably three times a year. So we're looking at meeting again, you know, within the year for sure uh, to address the next sort of to actually make progress and, and move the ball forward. So this is a session of oral abstracts. So this is a new science that's being presented and it was uh, selected from a number of uh, things that were submitted looking at how bacteria become resistant. So this is looking in patients and in experimental models. So I'll be convening with Dr. Cesar Arias uh, this session for an hour and a half to look at all this new science. So I think ID Week has grown into the preeminent meeting in our specialty. So we have over 5,000 scientists and physicians here this week representing all the different organizations, IDSA, SHEA, PIDS, and HIVMA. So we have adult and pediatric infectious disease docs all under one roof getting state-of-the-art updates and looking at new science. Um, I think it's also become really the preeminent meeting for training. Uh, the infectious disease doctors of the future. So we have more residents and fellows than we've ever had before in medical students. So we're very excited about that. I think our number one priority in the society is the recruitment and retention of new doctors for the next generation. So we're thrilled that we have so many young people here presenting their science and learning and interacting uh, to sort of make the next generation of ID docs.